Okay, so welcome to episode two of our inventory system tutorial series. Uh, in the last episode, we left it where we've got our test item here. We have a player. We can move the player over the item. We can move the player over the item and the item data gets added to our inventory and we've got a stack size of one. But I hard coded it um, to just directly add itself to inventory slot zero. Um, this isn't the correct implementation. This was just so we could see it working. So in this video, we're gonna be working on um, checking whether we can, uh, the inventory already contains the item. If it does add itself to the stack of the item, if it doesn't, it'll search for a free slot in the inventory and add itself there. And if it can't do that, then obviously the backpack's full. So it will return false and nothing will happen. The item will stay on the ground and it won't destroy itself because this only happens if we return true in our add to inventory script. So in our item pickup, we're saying if the add to inventory was successful, then destroy the object from the world. If it wasn't, just do nothing. So let's go back over to our inventory system.cs file. So the two functions that we've kind of, I've mentioned so far, we need to check whether our, our inventory contains an item. And if it does, we need to add it to that stack. And if not, we need to see whether there's a free slot. So the first thing we want, we're gonna do is we're gonna make a public void, sorry, we're gonna make a public bool called contains item. And this is gonna take in uh, the inventory, and this is going to take in some uh, inventory item data, which is the uh, item to add, and it's going to pass back out an inventory slot if if one exists. It's going to pass back out the slot that the item is contained within if we do actually contain the item. So I'm just going to. At the moment, just to get rid of the red squiggly line, I'm just gonna set inventory slot to null and return false. And this is what we'll do at the end of the function anyway. And the, so the next method we need to make is a public bool has free slot. And this is just gonna pass back out the very first free slot that it comes across. So uh, out inventory slot, free slot. And again, if it can't find a free slot, then we'll just um, we'll null out the inventory slot and we'll return false. And we'll we'll implement these properly in just a second. Let's go back to our add to inventory script. We're going to say here, if contains item, and we're going to pass in the uh, the item to add, and we're going to get back out the inventory slot that the item is contained in if if it does contain the item so if it contains the item uh, we're going to add to the stack of that slot so add to stack uh, amount well amount to add i've called it so amount to add and then we're going to say hey the inventory slot has been changed so on inventory slot changed and we're gonna say if that's if that's been subscribed to, if there's listeners of that event, if if it's not null, then uh, invoke it and pass through the inventory slot that has changed. And then in our UI, we can find the corresponding actual like square slot of the UI, and we can update just that slot. And then we just want to return true. Now, if it doesn't contain the item. We're going to want to check whether it's got a free slot. So else if has free slot. Uh, and it's going to pass back out an inventory slot, which will be our free slot. So I'm just going to put a note here. So check whether item exists in inventory gets the first available slot so here we can say free slot is equal to new 
slot uh, inventory slot and then we can pass in the uh, item to add and the amount to add as well and then we could just say on inventory slot changed dot invoke pass in our free slot and actually, so instead of making uh, a new slot here, we, we can just manipulate the free slot itself directly. So let's go over to our uh, inventory slot and let's actually make a public void update inventory slot. And this can take in uh, an inventory item data called data and an amount. So here we can just say item data is equal to data and stack size is equal to amount. So that way we don't have to destroy and make a new inventory slot. We can just call free slot dot update inventory slot and we can pass in the item to add and the amount to add as well. Then again, we can check whether our inventory slot changed event has anything subscribed to it and if it does we can invoke that event and we can just return true because again we were successful at adding it to our inventory and then if we it doesn't contain the item and it, and it doesn't have a free slot then we just return false and actually after we so if we go back to our contains item script we don't want to just get the um slot that um, has the item. We want to get a list of slots. So we just want to type in uh, list and then we're going to get back out an inventory slot list. I'm just going to copy this. I'm just going to put that here as well. Because in this um, contains item method, we're actually going to use a link function. So we're going to say that in slot is equal to inventory slots where and we'll open up some brackets and we'll say uh, i so for item i dot data is equal to our item to add and then we can send that to a list so if you haven't used um the system dot link namespace before um, there's a lot of helpful stuff you can do in inventory slots uh, with system.link. So for example, we could get inventory slots first and we could say the first slot. So I could be anything. So we could, we could say slot. So we could say first slot where the slot dot item data dot max stack size is greater than five as an example. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with system.link. I highly recommend looking more into it if you haven't come across it before. So just to make this more human readable, so we've got inventory slots dot where. So this is going to check all of our inventory slots and it's going to create a list of inventory slots and fill it where the item or I slot, this could be anything. So, so where our inventory slots item data is equal to the item that we want to add, then just put that in a list. So, and this is going to be our out list here. And then when we're checking whether it contains the item, we can say um, return. And then we can say that does the inventory slot dot count or is it is the count greater than one if the inventory slot dot count is greater than one then we can return true because it obviously contains the item and if it's less than one we can return false because it doesn't contain the item the item count size would be zero so now we're getting a list back out not an individual slot so now we need to check those slots to see whether there is room left in the stack, which is that method that we made earlier on our inventory slot. So I, we can now say for each variable slot in this in slot list, 
We're going to check. Does that slot have room left in its slot? We're going to check. Does that slot have room left in stack? So we say room left in stack. And you can see we've got one of two here. These are the two overloaded methods that we've made. Um, we don't need to know how many are remaining. We just need to know if we add this amount to the stack, will it fit this amount to add here? So say amount to add. If there is room left in the stack, then we're going to get this. I'm going to pop it in here, but this is going to be called slot. So it's going to be the slot that we're looking at in our inventory slot list, which we've got from our contained item. So our item pickup is going to get hit by our player and we're going to try and add itself to the inventory. In our add to inventory script, we're going to pass through the data that we want to add to our inventory and the amount of that data, or the amount of the item that we want to add. We're going to check with our, whether the inventory system contains this item. And if it does contain it, then we're going to get a list of all of the slots that have the item in it. And then we're going to check that list and we're going to check for a slot that actually has room left in the in the stack. If the stack's full or there's not enough room to add, so if say the maximum stack size was five, we had four in the stack already and we were trying to add two, there wouldn't be enough room for the two to go into the stack. So we check the next slot and the next and the next. And we need to get rid of the else if here because I found that it didn't work as intended when it was an else if. So we're going to see whether we contain the item. If it doesn't, it'll move on anyway and it'll check do we have a free slot. If it does contain the item, it's going to look for the item and see whether one of the slots can take the amount. If it can, it'll return true and call our inventory slot changed dot invoke. If it can't, then that's fine. It'll move on and it'll check for a free slot. So this should be uh, all working. Let's go back to the editor and check it works. And if it doesn't work, let's debug it. So I'm just going to come back to play here. Um, got our test item. I'm just going to make multiples of this test item now. We've got three, four, five, six. I believe we had test item, so a max stack size of five. So if we click on our play here and we keep a track on of the inventory system over here and we hit play. So we're going to go over this first item and nothing happens. Why would it work first time? Let's see what the problem is here. I feel like it might be this issue we're having here. I feel like it might be this here, this condition. Um, so let's just debug dot log in slot dot count. I feel like it might be because if there isn't anything in it, the count would be zero. Uh, then that list isn't going to be initialized. Okay, so we're getting count as zero back out. What we could do instead, let's um, check whether this is null. So is our inventory slot list null? If it is null, then it'll be false. We're going to return false because we haven't found anything. And if it isn't false, and if it has found something, um, some data in our inventory that equals this item, then it'll return true because this won't be null. So let's just leave that debug.log in for now. Let's just see if this works. And we'll hit play. And we'll drag our player over. Oh, you know what our mistake is? We haven't set up the free slot method. That's why. Well, we're always returning false, so we can't find a free slot to add it to. That was my mistake. So let's just finish this method before we get ahead of ourselves. So here we're going to say free slot equals uh, inventory slot dot for, uh, slots dot first or default, which is another system link um, 
method. And we're just going to say the first inventory slot I, where the data in that slot is null. So if it's null, that inventory slot is obviously empty. And we're just going to get the first slot that meets this criteria here. And then just like our contains item, we can do, we can just return free slot. Is free slot null? So has it found a empty slot? If it has found an empty slot, free slot would not be null, so it'd be true. If it hasn't found one, then free slot would be null, so it'd be false, and we wouldn't have found a free slot. So let's go back over to Unity and try this now. Go, we can add our items as we drag our player. We can see that it's stack size four, stack size five. So our maximum stack size is five. As we go over this next item, we should go to the next free slot, which is this one here. And there you go. So stack size one, this is our new slot. If we made a, another copy of this item here, but instead we called this test item two, and let's just make this, um, let's make another, material and we'll just call this uh, green set it to a green color assign that here i'm just going to swap these places round so our test item two here this green one let's set that to test item two I'm just going to make another copy of it here. And in, in our test item two, we set the data, the max stack size to one. So as our player goes over, we're going to pick up five. Then we're going to pick up one of our test item two. And then we're going to check our inventory for this, see that we're at the maximum stack. So we'll get the next free slot, which won't be slot two because this is going to be in it. So we'll get the next one after that. So let's hit play and we can see that all working. So let's drag our player forward. So we've got our five test item ones. Test item two goes into the first free slot that it found. Test item one again, but our stack size is full. So it's going to go into the next free slot that was available. It won't go over this one or overwrite that one. And then as we go over this, so the stack size was one. That's the maximum for test item two. So we've gone into the next free slot. So if I copy these and we make another row. If I get a player and fill up our inventory, will that have filled up the inventory? No. Let's, um, let's just set the stack size of test item one to one also. As we pick up these items, so our inventory is full now. When we go over these items, our inventory will be full. We won't successfully add it to our inventory, so they won't delete. So you see that as we go through them, they're not coming up off the ground because they can't successfully add themselves to our inventory. If we deleted um, an item and made it back to its null state, we could add another item to our inventory and it'd go into that free slot. Okay, so that's part two done of our inventory system. It was a bit shorter than part one, um, but we had kind of, you know, we'd set up a quite a good framework in the first video to just build upon in this second one. And you can see that the functionality is kind of now working as you would expect. So going forward, uh, we are gonna build on the system a little bit in the back end, but we're gonna start putting the UI elements together and showing how we can update the UI based on what is actually in our inventory. Again, I hope this is all making sense so far. If it's not, or you'd like anything kind of clarified, feel free to join the Discord server, which is linked in the description, or leave a comment below. If you're watching these live as they come out, the whole series of this is over up on uh, Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash danpos. You'll get the access to the full series and all of the project files as well. So the scripts that we're, we're building, um, I'm organizing the scripts by lesson in packages. So you'll be able to get the package for the lesson that you're following. Patreon is linked in the description below as well. But that's everything for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.